Welcome to our 132nd online gathering for faith leaders across the country. This weekly gathering is called Courageous Leadership and is sponsored by ELCA's coaching ministry. I am Jason O'Neill and I use any and all pronouns and I am one of the support staff for this ministry and your facilitator today. As we step into our time today, I would like to encourage us to remember that we are creating, excuse me, creating and holding a safe and brave space in these gatherings for you to bring the truth of who you are and how you are doing. These conversations are meant to be an intentional step to live more fully into God's dream for us as the body of Christ. Welcome to March. And since this is the first Wednesday of the month, we'll be doing our small groups by topics today. And before we go into breakout rooms, Let's take a minute to center ourselves. Please join me in prayer. Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, Pain Bearer, Life Giver, source of all that is and that shall be, father and mother of us all, divine caring presence within us, around us, and above us, dear one closer to us than our own hearts, farther from us than the most distant star, even with all that you are beyond naming, hold us with a sense of mystery and wonder in all that is unknown, May we find we have all we need to meet each day without anxiety. Overlook our many stupidities and help us to have grace for others with their stupidities. May we all know and feel that we are loved and may we always be the most generous expressions of your love in all your many names, known and unknown. Amen. So as we head into our breakout room conversations, David, yeah, thank you for pulling up the slide there. Oh, and I lost my full screen. So bear with me a second. <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> um, these are the topics. <clears throat> and you'll be able to choose your breakout room. I'm gonna go ahead and open those. We'll bring everyone back about 10 minutes till the hour and share learnings and insights together. <clears throat> God bless your conversations. Welcome back, everyone. So keeping the confidences of your small group colleagues, what did you hear or notice? That we can do more together than we can do alone. All right. I feel like that could be a sermon, Carlton. Go ahead, take it away. Well, we talked about um, doing a coast-to-coast -coast Zoom service to get churches to collaborate, to do something jointly. We mm -hmm. talk about doing things together, but we don't do it. And so we need to do it. All right. So we're going to hold ourselves accountable and do it. Fantastic. Reformation Sunday. Nice. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Carl, thanks, John. I ask if that togetherness involved other churches besides Lutheran, or was that just a Lutheran togetherness you're talking of? Well, we were thinking about the folks who are on in, in the room, but I, I think if we opened it up, it would be even richer, even better. It's a great idea. Well, for our conversations and race relations, I mean, it, it was just so rich, but to narrow it down, uh, the whole issue of um, being aware of microaggression kind of behavior, and also as the church, what does it really mean to be hospitable and welcoming to everybody, uh, not letting race or culture or sexual orientation, any of those issues uh, stop us from really making people see the light of Christ in us. And so, um, we got a lot of work to do, church. 
That's another sermon. Take it away, Gwendolyn. <laughs> <laughs> One of the other things that we talked about in the, in the urban group, and and we kind of we kind of pigeonhole some of these groups, um, but the similarities between rural and urban ministry and and challenges and um, you know as as a, as a rural rural kid who did internship in a in an urban congregation and now is back in urban. Um, and there's there are a lot of similarities. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, thank you, John. In leadership development, we talked about a lot of things, but two of them that stand out for me is are the value of listening, listening deeply to what council members, congregants are saying for opportunities that might open up based on what you learn when you listen. And also um, the importance of self-care and not just for body and mind, but also for spirit. Mm -hmm. And I, someone shared a lovely practice um, of when getting a massage of praying as the, as the masseuse touches different parts of the body, praying for the hands pray of, the, of that person and also for the various body parts so that hmm. body, mind, and spirit are all being touched on in that, in that experience. And I thought that was just beautiful. I love that. Also the reference to the body of Christ as we yeah, express that. And Carol, I'll throw into there from advocacy, there was a kind of meeting of curiosity, um, kind of taking what you said, but lensing it a little bit differently of being curious about each other and coming from a place of, like, I wonder not only what this other person might need from me in this moment, but what do I need from myself in this moment as we advocate for ourselves? Um, so just coming from kind of that wonder and awe and curiosity about the spirit that's between each, each of us. This is rich today. <laughs> One thing I learned in, in my group, uh, talking to JJ especially, is that uh, the challenge of being addressed by a, a, a pronoun we relate to, but I, I've realize that we are all they in a sense I because I learned in learning transactional analysis that we have sub personalities that we act and we act out a different part personality quite often mm -hmm. uh, and we should all get used to thinking of ourselves as they to some extent that's awesome John Otto thank you I just want to say gratitude for the opportunity to be in my room. Thank you, Melissa. I'll, I'll throw this out that I shared with the group. This morning, I had a chance to have a very short meeting with Reverend Dawn Alex, uh, who runs the, the faith uh, lead at a Luther Seminary. And I said, I know that a lot of clergy from all over are, are, are coming and taking your services. What's the secret sauce? How did that happen? And she said, right at the beginning of COVID, they were going to be having their, their homiletics um, um, meeting and they couldn't because of COVID. So they put it online and they put it out there and she advertised it to the whole world. They had 15,000 people attend. 15, my jaw dropped when I heard that number. So there are things we can do. Those numbers are out there. Now, what they had to do was follow up. What's the next step? Mm -hmm. But they already had the next step. And then they were able to market that. And now one is feeding the other one. It's, it's, and so they had this like wonderful, wonderful uh, blooming of things at that campus. So my question to all of you is, what can we do that reaches out to a population who is hungry for the word? Hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Barbara. 
So I want to be conscious of our time and say, join us next week for a surprise guest. More information coming. Uh, thank you again for being with us today and bringing your truth, your encouragement, your hope, all the things we share in the promises of God. So as we leave today, a blessing. You are seen. You are valued. You are loved. Asalaamu As Alaikum. You too, Jason. Amen. Wa Alaikum Asalaam.